Hello everyone. As I declared in the last video, we would not go forward to talk about the main concepts and items found in chapter 14. Instead, uh, we need to go back to chapter 10 uh, uh, for its fundamental importance to the study of language in general. This chapter, as you can see, uh, uh, entitled Pragmatics. With this chapter, uh, we are expected to be familiar and acquainted with some particular concepts, notions, as well as items that are related to the study of language. To start with, we have some objectives, for example, the pragmatics. What is pragmatics? I mean the definition of pragmatics. Then we uh, move to uh, know more about the uh, second objective, which is context, through which uh, uh, we uh, are going to uh, explain the relationship between pragmatics and context. Uh, also, another point under uh, this objective, we need to also be familiar with the types of context and the tools for analyzing the context. The third objective is about reference. In this section, we are uh, going to explain the tools for enabling the speaker and listener to understand and well recognize the intended meaning. The next point, point four, is about speech acts, through which we uh, would uh, uh, explain types of speech acts given in the book. The, the, the chapter ends with uh, point five, which is politeness. And when the, within this, we uh, are going to know the definition of politeness as well as the types of politeness. Now let's start with the definition of pragmatics. If you go to page 296, glossary, at the end of the book, uh, the, uh, pragmatics is uh, defined as the study of speaker meaning and how more is communicated than is said. This is very brief and short definition, but if we are after having uh, a more detailed definition to pragmatics, we may uh, find it in Oxford Advanced Learning Dictionary, uh, which defines pragmatics as the study uh, of the way in which language is used to express what somebody really means. And here we need to underline the word really in particular situation. And these two words are to be also underlined because particular situation means something else. We will explain in a minute especially when the actual words used may appear to, more, to mean something else. And this is the last line also need to be underlined. Now let's explain some of the uh, important points that are found in this definition uh, stated or given by in, sorry, uh, in Oxford Advanced Learner Dictionary. Now really means, it means we, as, as speakers, may use words, phrases, utterances to mean something. However, this thing can be explained or interpreted differently from the, uh, uh, the listener. That's why this chapter exploits some important matters that we as speakers need to rely upon while communicating with each other. Okay? So this is one thing. The other thing when we say, or when the definition says, particular situation, it means we may use words to mean something in this situation, but the same words may mean something else in different situation. As the last point appears in the definition given in the dictionary I refer to, Words used may appear to mean something else. This is a, com uh, a complementary part of uh, what is uh, said about the particular situation. So we may use a word, a sentence, to mean something in this situation. Similarly, we may use the same words, but these words may mean something else in different situation. Most important to know is that when we talk to each other, we are after communication. And while communication, while communicating between, uh, while, while, we, while we communicate uh, with each other, 
we are after delivering or sending a message and this message must be identified and recognized clearly otherwise it is from the part of the listener may misunderstand the, myth, the message that we are after I highlight some uh, lines here on uh, page 125 which is the uh, the first page in the chapter chapter 10 communication clearly depends let me highlight this communication clearly depends on not only recognizing the meaning of words so now these the meaning of words are not I mean the meaning of words used in a communication is not the only thing that we care about as listeners or as receivers in an utterance but also recognizing what speakers mean here it means that the speaker may mean something more than or beyond the uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the meaning of the words by their utterances the study of what speakers mean or speaker meaning is called the pragmatics practically speaking the book gives us two figures to illustrate what we have been talking about uh, heated attendant parking this is a car parking and uh, on page 127 we have what baby and toddy's sale now uh, if we just stick to the literal meaning of the words that are found here in the picture we might not or definitely we are not going to arrive at a clear identification and recognition to the words found in the figure here now let's see what is it now uh, this talks about the figure some explanations given here let me highlight these lines please wait okay now if we only think about the meaning of the phrase as a combination of the meanings of the words which means the words given in the figure here using furniture sale furniture sale as an analogy we might arrive at an look here this is the literal explanation to the words found in the figure me the literal explanation the literal interpretation says what uh, we have you know someone is announcing the sale of some very young children which means that the children the four children found in the in the figure are for sale is this logical reasonable of course not we resist we reject this possible interpretation this interpretation is for what for the literal meaning of the words found in the figure but the real interpreta interpretation instead is an advertising a sale of cloths for whom for those young children you see this is the difference now between the literal meaning of one word or a group or a combination of words and the real meaning of these words now the literal meaning can be found in dictionaries while the combinations or the combination of these words they are put together to mean something and this thing is the study of of the meaning of these words which flows into the field of pragmatics now this is the, the exact role of pragmatics is to give or it helps the speaker as well as the reader to uh, uh, understand what is beyond the literal meaning of the word now the word class doesn't appear in the message look if we go back again to the to the figure we don't have here the word class we have sale we have baby and toddler right but the intended message is very clear to be seen as class doesn't appear in the message but we can bring it means we can infer we can expect we can interpret or understand the idea in our interpretation of the message as we work out what the advertiser intended us to understand of course now again the advertiser is not after uh, advertising babies or children for sale however it is about class for those baby 
for sale, we are actively involved in creating an interpretation of what we read and hear. Now, what makes us sure that uh, the words found in the figure uh, do not mean that these babies are for sale as an advertisement. Instead, we have cloths for babies for, advertis for advertisement is the context. Now, simply the context is found to be words that come just before or after a word or a phrase or a statement and help uh, these words help the listener, the listener sorry, to understand its meaning exactly. Now, uh, here the book refers also to some discussions of the examples found as figures. Uh, 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 we emphasize the influence of context. Of course, uh, context is the decisive factor which decides uh, the meaning or the general meaning of given words, and whether they are in figure, they are uh, texted in messages, or they are spoken, whatever these words uh, are in this or in, on that occasion. But mainly, we need to know that what makes us or what helps us to decide that the meaning of these words means something is the context. Now, the context found to be uh, as different of different types sorry we have the physical context you see here now next if you are asked what are the types or what is context you may use the example that is or the definition that is given at the end of the book under the section of the glossary which you will find the uh, definition is very 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 uh, uh, precise but uh, Again, if you want to detail and to uh, know uh, exactly what is meant by the context, it's a, let's say, group, a group of words that come just before or after, I repeat, come or after, a word, a phrase, or a statement, and these words help the listener, not the speaker, because the speaker is the sender, uh, is the sender of the message, but it is important for us as listeners to understand what, what that message means. And these words, again, uh, uh, help the listener or listeners to understand the meaning or the real meaning, not the literal, but the real meaning of these words given by or sent by, sent by the speaker. Now, uh, here we have the physical context. Physical, when we say physical, it means something tangible, something that we can touch. It depends, for example, on the location, and the book gives us the example here of a bank. Let's see. Uh, uh, which can be uh, the location out there where we encounter words or phrases like the word bank on a wall. The word bank on a wall of a building is understood what? As a financial institution. A bank, the bank that we may have our saver there or we, where, the place where we make our, uh, our withdrawals from. So it is what? A financial inst uh, institution. Because the word bank is put on a, on a building, and this is an indication, I mean, the physical context here indicates for us as readers or viewers to that sign that this is a building, and it is about a, something related to the financial, financial items as a financial institution. But this word, again, has got different explanation. Uh, before that, let's see the second type of, lingu the, uh, of context, which is, which is the linguistic context, or as known as context. Now, the context of a word, it means the linguistic context of a word, is the set of other words used in the same phrase or sentence. If the word bank, again, is used with other words like steep, or overgrown, we have no problem deciding which type of bank is meant. Or when someone says that she has to get to the bank to withdraw some cash, the context, it means the linguistic context, tells us which type of bank is instead. Now, we have now two explanations. Before that, we have two types of context. We have the physical context, the things that we can see, the things that we can touch, it is tangible, and we have the linguistic context or the context. Now, the example given here of the word bank. The bank has got two explanations. The context decides 
the meaning or the exact, not the literal, but the real meaning of the word, depending on what? On, let's say, location. For example, if you want to withdraw money, of course, this word bank means bank, the financial institu institution. But if you want to cross the, uh, the river to the other bank, it means here the other side or the other bank of the river meant in the speech. Aside from the types of context as found to be the uh, physical context as well as the linguistic context between two brackets, the cortex, we have uh, something else to know which helps us also understand the intended meaning in a given speech. It is about the word you can see here, dikes or dikes. In British, accent, in British uh, English, it is as dikes, but in American English, it is as dikes. Now, this talks about what? Talks about some words, and these words, without the context, cannot be interpreted or explained. Uh, there are some very common words in our language that can't be interpreted at all. So there is no doubt we have a group of words in any language that cannot be explained or that cannot be interpreted unless we have the context to be put into being. Now, these are words such as here and there, this or that, now or then, yesterday, today, or tomorrow. In general, dikes or dikes uh, is found to be the meaning of words which depend on the where, which means the place, the when, which means time, and the doer of such an action. For example, by whom this thing or that thing is used. Let's see some definitions and explanations to the here and there. Now, here and there, of course, these two words refer to what? Refer to place, this and that as well. So all these words, without knowing, without having a shared assumption between the speaker and the listener, this here and there, as well as this and that, <coughs> I'm sorry, cannot be interpreted, which means they need context to be understood and to be interpreted correctly. Now, then, yesterday, today, or tomorrow, these words, these dikes or dikes, are about the when, because they refer to time. Also, we have what third type of uh, dikes, like pronouns, such as you, me, she, him, and so on. Now, some sentences of English are virtually impossible to understand if we don't know who is speaking about whom, now who is the speaker, and the speaker is talking about whom, I mean the object, the target, where, well the place, when about time, for example, you will have to bring it back tomorrow because he isn't here today, let's see, now you will have to bring it, what is it, this is a pronoun, and it is a dexis or a dexis, right, back tomorrow, why tomorrow? Why not the day after? Why not today? Why not now? Let's see. Because she, who is she? Isn't here. Here where? Today. Now the words uh, uh, given in this sentence will be vague and cannot be interpreted unless the interference of the uh, context, particularly the dioxys. Now let's see some explanation that which is related to the given example here. Let's see. Now, out of context, without context, this sentence is really vague, right? It contains a lot. Why, why is it vague? Because it contains a large number of expressions, like you, it, tomorrow, she, here, today. Now, if we join these together, we produce a sentence like the one given above. But what is, what is the meaning of the sentence? Of course, it's unknown. That really uh, that rely, sorry, on knowledge of the local context. So now here we have uh, the uh, the context or see, the local context which helps us explain the meaning of the given words in the sentence above. Now, it is about what? It is about a delivery driver will have to return 
on this date with the long box now the long box the long box is what is referred to by it labeled flowers so the whole case is about flowers okay now bring it back it means to bring the maybe the bunch of flowers handle with care okay address to whom to Lisa Landry or Landry now this is the she here okay now expressions such as tomorrow means it refers to what to date to time and here refers to place are technically known as dyadic okay dyadic expressions which is uh, generated or uh, yeah descended from greek initial uh, greek origin sorry the word dyaxis which means pointing via language through the use of language now we use dyaxis to point to people like him them those things places about here there after this and about time now then and so on now again back to the explanation of the uh, example without knowing or having a shared assumption a shared knowledge between the speaker and the listener between the one who is supposed to receive that delivery and between the delivery there is a message from this person to the delivery man <coughs> to the driver sorry you will have to bring it back okay tomorrow because today it is not 15th of February it is 14 why because it is not the correct appointment to uh, have this delivery and this delivery uh, is about what contains what contains bunch of flowers referred to in the sentence as it now it will be not uh, interpreted correctly unless the delivery man and the person who is in charge of having that package unless they have a shared assumption a shared knowledge and understanding between them of course that the driver may ask I mean as a listener may ask what do you what do you mean by it and who is she but because they know this bunch of flowers is addressed to uh, this lady Lisa now they have to what to agree upon the sentence given in the exam example and there will be no other explanation and that person who receives the action who receives the message from the man I mean the driver receives the message from somebody uh, unless they have the uh, shared assumptions between them this sentence will be uh, of course uh, in the field of uh, being vague vague sorry and ununderstandable now again the book gives us some types of dexes personal dexes spatial spatial means place and temporal dexes this is about the time okay so uh, all these dexes let's see All these dialectic expressions have to be interpreted in terms of which person, who is the speaker, place, or time, the speaker has in mind. Okay, so sorry, this is about the message between uh, uh, two people. We make a broad dis distinction between what is close to the speaker, which is this and here and now, and what is distant which which is far from that speaker that there then we can also indicate whether a movement is away so this paragraph is about the explanations of the types of dikes found here in the front of you you see again just think about telling someone go to bed versus come to bed so now go to bed and come to bed let's see what what we have here dikes can even be entertaining for, for laughter for amusement the bar owner who puts up a big sign that reads free beer tomorrow it means today you have to pay but tomorrow if you come you don't need to pay when you come tomorrow this is for entertainment of course if you come tomorrow again the sign will read tomorrow not the day that you are in today to get you to return to the bar this is a kind of uh, like for example sometimes we find in places in shops smoking is allowed 
every day or smoking is not allowed today maybe tomorrow so when you come tomorrow to that place again you read the sign and again you will understand it is of course for entertainment not for the uh, uh, real one but it is a kind of uh, here a, a kind of uh, very polite invitation uh, for visitors for uh, customers to visit uh, this uh, place or this bar and also in places find found in different uh, locations talking about smoking talking about standing in front of sh shops talking about parking you can park your car uh, for example every day except today so these are about to uh, give what a sign to the receiver who is supposed to be the listener about the intended meaning uh, which is uh, 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 articulated by the, the speaker. Okay, so with this, I think this is enough for video one. Maybe with the coming videos, we are going to know more about the, uh, pra the uh, relative items and concepts related to pragmatics. Now, again, we may have a picture uh, partially, clear, uh, partially clear, not fully clear. Uh, when we talk about pragmatics, we don't talk about the literal meaning of the given words. We talk about what, what uh, we talk about the uh, the real meaning or the intended meaning that can be understood and shared by the the two parties, the speaker and this the listener. Okay. So now, how to interpret? Of course, we have uh, some tools through which the listener. Most important to focus on the listener. The listener may use. Uh, 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 spontaneously uh, uh, use these <clears throat> tools to interpret the intended, intended uh, meaning given in a sentence. Thank you very much.